there and thanks for tuning into the second video from the One Minute Manager and Leadership Series. Now, if you haven't already watched the first video, I recommend you go back to your emails, click on the link and watch that. It's only a few minutes, but it goes into a bit more detail on situational leadership and, and provides a bit more of a, a bit more background that will help refresh your memory because it's really important to hear this a few times to really get it. All right, if you've already done that, sweet, good job. All right, let me get on with this one. We talked about situational leadership as being a way to apply ourselves differently to in different situations with different people to yield the best possible result. All right, so I'm going to break that down a little bit further. Now, in the book and in my training program, we talked about splitting people's development into four broad categories. So let's face it, you know, there's a lot of brain, all of this, but just to keep it simple, four broad categories. And we had D1, D2, D3, D4. All right, so from someone new to a business to someone you know, who, who basically could be delegated almost any task. Okay, now let me just, before I go into any detail on that, I wanna just to point out why this is so important to have that sort of, um, those levels of development. And it comes back to something that I like to call the progress principle. Now the progress principle states that it, as human beings, we have a deep-seated desire to feel like we're moving ahead in our lives and growing. And you will know yourself that you've had, if you've ever had times where you've, you felt like you're, you know, you're, you're not moving anywhere, you're getting a bit stagnant, you're getting bored, you, you know that's not a good feeling, right? You, you, you tend to sort of have to make drastic changes to try and you know, keep yourself interested. Uh, and that's pretty natural. You know? We all have this need to keep moving forward, keep growing. And one of the worst things that can happen in a business is where that, dis that dissipates and basically you don't feel like there's anywhere to go for you. And that what ends up happening is people leave. So the progress principle states that people need to feel like they're moving forward. So back to the, the D1 to D4, here's how it works with regard to the One Minute Manager series and here's how it works with regard to um, just developing staff in general. When a new staff member starts in your business and we, we say they're a D1, uh, what, we're thought, what we're talking about here is we're just trying to give a broad umbrella to all of those people who start off very keen, very eager to please because they've just got the job, you know, they're green but they're, they're happy to do whatever it takes uh, to move forward, to be liked and everything, to be accepted into the business because, you know, it's, they don't really know uh, anyone, they don't know much about the role. So we know when people first come on board, they've got very high commitment or they're, you know, they're very willing, very prepared to do what it takes. Um, but they're not necessarily skilled up, okay? So as a manager or as a leader, our job is to recognize that and make sure that we spell things out, even if we think they may already know some of it, even if we, we, we want to, you know, we, and actually we would assume potentially they, they would have certain things covered already. It's, it's our prerogative to be very clear, very straightforward, set very definite expectations outcomes, deadlines, and follow up, follow up, follow up, all right? Because we need to be sure that this person knows what they're doing and also is able to deliver. That's our job. Now, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like doing that, well, that's something you're gonna have to step over. I had to when I was in my management career, um, I used to be a bit uncomfortable telling experienced people who'd worked in other industries or other places um, in similar sort of capacities exactly what they needed to do. But I found a way to sort of inject it, my personality into it to sort of open it up, still go through the information, but not necessarily sound like I was teaching to suck eggs again, all right? And you know what the big thing was? They would appreciate it. They would appreciate the fact that I was taking the time, making sure that they were all right before I just left them to their own devices. And we all know that that can sometimes be a bit frightening when someone just assumes you know, and then they leave you to it, and you often make mistakes. So D1, spell it out. D2 is when that staff member has been a little bit more familiarized with the, 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 the business and the role, and they're starting to feel you know, quite comfortable, they know how to do the basics, um, so therefore they don't feel like an idiot anymore, and they, to some degree they kind of feel like they could do without a little bit of supervision because they're, uh, they've, they've found their feet. Um, now, what's really important here when you wear D2s, and this could be a few months into a job role, depends on the industry, depends on the place, D2s tend to have what we call variable commitment, or they're their, um, their interest will start to wane a little bit, all right? And that's, that's natural because once we've kind of learned a job, and learned the, the basics of it, we reach a sort of a plateau level where we feel a bit quite, you know, feel comfortable and we kind of think, okay, what else is there? And we start to really analyze it from a bit of a broader perspective. Now, this is a bit of a danger territory for managers who are looking to, you know, if they've got a good staff and looking to keep them, 
you need to be aware that because their uh, commitment is starting to vary, it's not saying they're not doing a good job, it's saying that if a, something better came along, uh, they may move, they may move to that and you have to start back at square one again, which let's face it, no one wants to do. So our job with D2s is to explain, is to deepen the understanding that they have about the job role, to, to commit a little bit more time potentially to sort of um, just, just filling in the, some of the blanks um, and also, really importantly, to make them feel like they belong, okay? Because if you make them feel like they belong, and they've got a bit of a family here, they're going to stick with you for a while to come, all right? So how do you make them feel like they belong? Well, you know, you can do a lot of different things. It could be just uh, more getting involved with the team more. It could be just rotating with a few other people. Um, it could just be recognizing them publicly in one of the meetings. There's a lot of things you can do, but you need to just think about that and think, how do I make sure that this person belongs? Because potentially they could leave us and we've done all this work, we don't want to don't lose them too early. D3, of course, is where you've been doing a great job. They've worked their way up through the business um, to a position where they're very competent. They're very good at what they do. And, and to some degree, you know what happens in most businesses? People forget about you now. All right, they go, oh cool, he knows what to do, she knows what to do, don't worry about him anymore, I can just get on with my other stuff. And this is probably the worst thing that you can do because once someone's reached that area or that capacity where they're good at what they do, you, know, you don't want to forget about them, you want to remind them how valuable they are and how much you appreciate them. And more importantly, you want to keep building them. You know, if you just let them go and they start to stagnate, like I said earlier, gone. They're gonna walk out. Uh, they're going to find something to get a, go back to u uni or go to school or whatever they want to do, get another job. Um, so we need to recognize who's in that D3 level. Yeah? And think about your people. You know? Hopefully you've been thinking about those new starters, you know, the D2s who are a little bit unsure, the D3s now. You've got a picture in your mind of who that person is. Because it's those people now that are very good at what they do who are thinking, well, what else is there? What else is there for me? You know, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. And they've plateaued again. You need to build them. You need to think about what can I give this person? What task, what project, what responsibility can I give this person to take them out of their comfort zone slightly to lift them up to the next level? You know, to try and take them up so they uh, feel like they're still building their, their character, building their skills, and just going somewhere, just progressing, as we talked about earlier. So D3 is really important. You have to step outside of yourself and think, what what would I need if I was in their position? You know, what would be a good task looking at all the things I've got on that I could allocate to them that would give them enough of a challenge to stay interested, to feel like they're, they're growing? Okay, if we do all that well, you know, pat ourselves on the back, that's great work, but then we get, to, we get them to D4. Now D4 is when literally you can start to relax a little bit. You can allocate tasks and you know you've got a committed, highly skilled staff member who's just willing to do what it takes, all right? Not everyone makes it to D4. Not everyone's got the character or the right alignment with your business or the ability to do the work that you need. But when you, if, if your mission is to do, get as many people as possible up to this level of expertise and loyalty, then you are going to, you're going to have far more capacity to delegate and, and re release some of your workload than you would as if you hadn't been thinking about it at all and were just hoping someone was really good would turn up and you could you know, share some of your workload. And what typically happens is people don't look at developing people up to that level, and what they do is they start blaming the people at you know, D2s and 3s, saying, oh, geez, you know, that's not an initiative, don't do that, don't do that. You know, let's hold a big fat mirror up to ourselves and say, what am I doing to help these people? Because my job as a leader, my job as a manager, is to serve my staff. They are above me, and I'm serving them to become bigger and better people. They're on my shoulders, all right? And the more I can help people, the more people that you know, I can help up, the more I'm going to help myself up as well. Okay, so stuff to think about again. I hope that you've got a few people again running through your mind. If you haven't already taken action and done anything about some of the ideas and thoughts you've had, well, now's the time. You know, talk to your manager, write something down, go speak to someone, and just grow yourself, progress yourself. Because let's face it, that's really what this is all about. So I'm very passionate about that one. I'm going to uh, catch you next week and uh, we'll have uh, another refresher video for you. Until then, keep working on those uh, D1s, D2s, and D3s. Bye.